Okay, it's the mechanics sample exam, question one. This is the diagram. Um, I'll assume you've got a copy of the exam with you and you've tried to do it, so I'm just going to go through those solutions. Uh, we've got this dart being launched from a tube, shot into a block, and then the block slides and comes to rest. And we want to know for part A, we want to know if the students should use a if, if the force accelerating the, the dart stays constant, should the students use a longer tube or a shorter tube to uh, cause the uh, stopping distance for the big block, this one here, to be the longest? So the block goes the distance D and stops. L is the length of the tube. If we want a big D, do we want a big L or a small L? So I think even to someone... Um, who hasn't taken physics, you probably might intuitively say that a big L gets you the biggest distance. But, and that's true, you do. But uh, we want to justify our answer. So what we have here is a force going this way, okay, to the right, and the force is constant. Anytime you have a force acting over some distance, okay, and you're given the force and the distance, you should be thinking energy, okay? So uh, accelerating the dart, while the dart is being accelerated, okay, the work done by that force is F times L, okay? It would be, uh, if you want the little explanatory note, the force dot with the displacement, okay? For a constant force, remember, this, uh, this works, and in 1D, it turns out to be just that force, the magnitude of the force times the distance, uh, times the distance over which the force acts, okay? Um, and that's going to equal uh, kinetic energy of the dart, which I will call KD, okay? Um, and then while the block is decelerating, okay, decelerating block, okay, the friction force, you guys ought to be comfortable now saying that the friction force is going to be constant, okay? If you want to draw a quick FPD, you can say, look, here's the normal force on the block. Here's the... Uh, weight of the block, which is m plus m times g, okay, and then the frictional force on the block, the kinetic friction force on the block will go like that, and you'll have fk equals mu k times the normal force, okay, uh, which is going to be equal to, you can, you know, you can jump ahead here, u mu k times the total mass of the block and the dart plus g, which is constant, okay, so uh, since fk, fk is constant, okay, the work done by friction, work done by friction is going to be, well, the only difference between this and the dart being accelerated is that now the force is in the opposite direction of the motion. So your work done is going to be negative fk times d, okay? So, um, at this point, uh... You basically, what you have is you have most of an argument here, okay, that uh, uh, if you want, basically, if you want a bigger D, means more, uh, or let's see, more energy removed by friction. Remove, let me see if I can, there we go, by friction. Okay, and so if you want more energy to go into the system so that it can be removed by friction, okay, more energy in requires bigger L. Now, I'll be honest with you here. So you, you could sort of go and make, and make this your, your sort of answer, answer sentence. Um, the thing is, mechanical energy is not conserved in this system, okay? We have... Um, an inelastic collision, okay? Remember, an inelastic collision is a non-bouncy collision. So that's when that's what you have when the dart hits the block and they end up going at the same speed. That's an inelastic collision, okay? And I, I feel like this requires you to know a lot, or not know a lot, but this is sort of a subtle point, okay? Um, is that the inelastic collision, collision, uh, removes a fixed fraction of the energy. So I'll say it removes a fixed 
I'll write percent because the easy way to write a fraction. Okay, fixed percent of energy. Okay, so uh, sorry, that's inelastic C collision, not roll. Okay, so I would say this probably um, along with this and this, okay, um, is probably, you know, uh, I guess I would call that an answer. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what else you can do to answer the question and justify it short of actually going through and doing the whole thing. And they don't seem to want you to do that. Okay. If you do go through and go, get through the whole thing. So I'll just say this is part A. If you do go through and get the whole thing, you should get uh, the answer they give in part B. Okay, which I'm just going to reproduce here rather than do a cut and paste. Uh, D equals F L M over, and this is big M plus, or sorry, little M plus big M, whatever, commutative property, um, UK times G. Okay, so, um, and th this is just what's on the sheet. Okay, so for part B, they're saying, given this, um, they want to know whether this accurately measures your explanation, or sorry, accurately matches your explanation in part A. And they say without algebraic manipulation of equations, um, which seems, I don't know, it seems silly to me because algebra is just an extension. Algebra really, not to go all philosophical on you here, but algebra is a um, is, is really just extending common sense rigorously into math. And so anything, anything you can do algebraically, you could just say in words, it might take a lot, lot longer, but you could. So, um, I'm, I'm a little, I, I think it's a little weird to have that, that particular restriction there, but okay, whatever. Um, so anyway, does this match our prediction? Well, um, it shows that basically we have, uh, you know, uh, if we increase uh, L, we get an increase in D. Okay, that's pretty clear from the thing. Check. Okay, so you can say that. Um, you can also say, uh, let's see, work done by the, uh, the I don't know, Work done by the constant force F, okay? Work done, maybe I'll say work Excel for work done in accelerating the dart equals FL, okay? And the work done to decelerate the dart is negative FKD. And these two imply, okay, since there's a fixed percentage of, in, of energy uh, lost in the inelastic collision, okay? What these imply is that L and D should relate linearly. And lo and behold, they do, right? You have, you have a check, they do, because you have a, a L to the one in your expression for D. Um, so I, I think that, I think that's enough to show that it matches this explanation. Uh, so I would go with you know this, and arguably you don't even need that first line about L increasing with D because I already just said they increase or they relate linearly. Okay, so I'll say that's B. Um, I, that's the best I can see. Again, I, I think if you solve the problem, okay, um, which I I would have said back when we finished the unit on uh, energy, work and energy, and we had already done collisions, you should, at that point, you should have been able to solve this problem in like 10 minutes, okay, and get this expression. Now, you know, it's been uh, about a semester since then, okay, you've had to worry about E&M, you've forgotten some mechanics, so, you know, I, you might not be at tip-top shape, um, but if you were to solve this, which I think I think you could do if you were to solve this and then come up with the answer and let that be your answer to part A and B. I don't understand why that wouldn't be valid, but it seems to me like that would be algebraic manipulation of equations. So 
I hate to just leave you more confused. I mean, my, my job as a teacher should be to do things that make you feel more confident and secure in what you're doing. Um, unfortunately, we're in this, this situation where um, everybody, including the, the college board, is making it up as they go. And, and to be fair to them, they're not in control of the coronavirus any more than we are. Um, so I, I feel like, given that I'm a little uncertain about what exactly they want, I feel like the answers I've given ought to cover what they're asking for in parts A and B. So that's my answer for parts A and B, and I will do uh, C, D, and E in the next video.